in this example I've already completed my design now the design could have come from anywhere, could have come from an input file, a GenIO file using any of the tools available in MX anything you like but the design has been completed and I'm going to design pavement layers for it with reference to the existing road surface so because I want to reference the existing road surface I'm going to use the pavement and subgrade design to existing pavement option and this is available if you have an MX Renew license or a MX Road Suite license so I'll type a name and I'm going to choose fill keying here and we'll look at the different keying methods in a moment click next to get to a function control panel and I just need to specify my design surface now it is a finished design so I do have design edges okay so I'm picking the two road edges there and then the ground model and the existing road edges in the ground model just reduce me offsets click next to process that information and we see the cross-section graphic with the existing pavement in white the existing ground in dash green and we can step through the cross-sections checking for anomalies in the survey once we're happy we can click finish that takes us back to the function control panel and most of these options pavement layer design, subgrade design and so on and so forth are common to all of the methods that we're looking at here so you can get the, exactly the same functionality in these three overlay design options so it's common in all of those cases so let's now look at the pavement layer design functionality now I haven't been into pavement layer design for this MX project so the first thing I see is the style set preview panel I haven't got any style sets yet so let's create one I'm just going to create a nominal four layer pavement style here I'm just typing in the depth of the layers as I go and I'm also going to type in shifts using negative sign on the left positive on the right and you can see how the pavement style preview has updated to show those shifts let's uh, close and we'll save the style So we're now back in the style set preview panel. I can click on that style to see its details. I can also copy it to the public styles folder if I want to. So it's there for another scheme. And then click close to come into the design settings panel. So to apply that style, all I need to do is pick the two limit strings. Okay, so I'm going to apply that to my road so pick the two strings click add and there's the pavement style created now you might wonder why that pavement style has not been fitted to the existing road surface after all we did supply the existing road edge strings the reason for that is this style has not been told to fit to the existing road surface so I click the edit style button and go to the fit layer option so I'm going to fit layer 2 and once I lose focus all the layers below it are fitted which means that those three layers will honour the existing road surface the top layer won't because I'm going to leave that as no fitting because I always want to lay um, my wearing course so we'll just save the file to overwrite it and as we see and we come back into the design settings panel the pavement layer design has been automatically updated and we can see how there's no new pavement layers below the existing road surface however the layers where we specified the shift have been created because those shifts take those two layers outside the existing road edges now we probably don't want that so I'm going to go into the options panel 
and use the option here to clip any shifted layers back to the existing edge. So we'll click OK to that and we see now in the preview that those shifted layers have been clipped back. If I just step forward a few changes, step back one there actually, and we can see how on the right hand side of the design the design edge is outside the existing pavement edge so we see the full depth construction appear here the two shifted layers and the the two layers above it and we can see here how the pavement layers have been keyed into the road surface now here we're using fill keying which means that the layers will stop as soon as they cause scarification to occur now layer 1 as I said will always be created because it is not fitted. And layer 2 here, this 60mm layer, you can see how it comes in from the left hand side and it stops the vertical face there as soon as the bottom of the layer hits the existing road surface. So the area of material below layer 2, we can't get layer 3 in, there's not enough depth, so that area will be measured as regulation to layer 2 and across here to the right of where layer 2 stops the area of material in here will be measured as regulation to layer 1. If you would prefer to cause scarification to get the layers in you can go back to the options menu and choose cut keying instead of fill keying. Process that, step through the changes slightly here's a good example so we can see here how layer 3 in this particular case starts on the left hand side here and comes across and continues to be constructed while some of it is above the existing road surface and just here the top of layer 3 hits the existing road surface so that's where the limit of layer 3 will occur so layer 3 is going to cause scarification to the existing road surface so that it can be constructed. And you can see how you can get some interesting situations where, as, which, as we've shown here, where the top of layer 3 just clips the existing road surface for a little way, Okay, so causing two areas of uh, layer 3 to be constructed there. The final keying option is barrier keying, as the graphic says there's no pavement intrusion, so we'll click OK on that, and you only get the unfitted layers okay, above the existing road surface. Okay, So this depth below layer 1 is measured as regulation to layer 1. Okay, Only non-fitted layers will occur above the existing road surface and then there's the full construction across to the right of the existing road surface. We change back to keying. I'll just step forward a couple of changes here. And notice here how the earthworks outline, this magenta line, is going down below the bottom of the layers. Okay, Above the existing surface it will follow the existing surface because we don't want quantities to be measured twice but on the right hand side it's chasing around the bottom of the layers. Now if that bottom layer was a capping layer that would normally be measured as an earthworks item not a pavement item and I would also want to know the uh, materials below the earthworks outline. So I can model that here by saying that that bottom layer is an earthworks item not a pavement item. Save the style again. Just step forward to change 20, change 30 there where we get the full construction again and you can now see how the earthworks outline the magenta line is above that bottom layer. OK, I can also turn on the show subgrade option if I want to, so I can see the difference between the earthworks outline section and the subgrade section. And we can report the volumetric difference between those two surfaces. I'm going to do one more edit to this pavement style. There's a, a, an extend column here, so I'm going to say that for layer 4, I want to extend it 
you can see the options we've got available so I could extend it to the side slope I'm going to say that I want to extend it to a string on the right hand side okay save the style again close that and I'm now being asked to supply a string name so I'm going to pick the uh, the right verge here the back of verge and update let's just step to the changes again so you can see how that bottom layer now has been extended in actual fact it's been extended past the back of verge string and that's because the shift is still active so I might want to take that shift back to zero in this particular case just step up to change 30 again and you can see how that layer has now been shifted till it aligns with the offset of the back of verge now one example use for this is you might have um, a filter drain running down the back of verge and you want the pavement layer to extend to the filter drain but then use a shift to bring it back to the edge of the filter drain so that's one example of where this functionality can be used I may also have areas of full reconstruction where I know that the existing pavement is is not up to the strength criteria I need and I need to excavate the whole pavement surface so I can get my full construction in I can do that using the preparatory works options I can say I don't want a reconstruction I'll just do it from uh, 20 to 40 there we'll add that in and apply it okay so if we look at the the cross-section graphic we can see we've been told here's a reconstruction area at chain is 30 and at 40 again and then at 50 we're back to our overlay situation so just a simple example of how you can say that you want to punch a hole through the existing pavement surface for full depth construction there's other functionality in here for example I can specify topsoil strips so outside the um, existing uh, sorry outside the design road edges I can say I want to strip a depth of topsoil perhaps 0.2 add that in and apply it and we can see how the the graphic shows the area of topsoil strip there I can also specify cutbacks if I like and cutbacks are where I know that the outer edges of the existing pavement are perhaps uh, weak and need to be constructed so we'll just use a uh, perhaps a, 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 a meter width of, of cutback there on the two edges and apply that in so again we can see how our full construction now appears on the left and the right hand outside meter of the existing road edges so far I've only worked in one zone now you actually have 15 zones and zones work across the cross section so I could have a pavement construction for topsoil to the verge another pavement construction for topsoil to the side slopes for example as I say up to 15 constructions across the cross section and then I've got up to a hundred areas along the the limits of the scheme so over the change range of the scheme so that gives you a lot of flexibility to vary the constructions across and along the design once I'm happy with my pavement design I can just click the the green tick icon to finish and close through and I'm back to the function control panel I'm only going to look at um, a couple of the reporting options now um, the first one I was going to look at was the additional reports option just to show that in here you have several reports surface differences um, a block up table if you prefer so you can run that report to get differences between the the two surfaces offsets depths from design to existing and existing to design uh, planing depths again lots of good information coming out here for your setting out information on site also look at the general reports option as you can see here there's a a raft of uh, volumetric reports available to you topsoil strip cutbacks volumes um, earthworks outline to subgrade and various options like that I'm just going to run the, the pavement report click apply 
these reports are generated as Excel spreadsheets and uh, we can see for each chainage it, we've got um, the, the pavement layers coming in okay their, their um, depths and volumes um, scarification regulation all of the quantities are, are listed there for you with summaries um, there's different kinds of reports here detailing um, the information in in different ways so hopefully that's a, a, a quick and efficient way of getting pavement regulation scarification quantities generated for your design